Three. Might be turning out better than what I thought it would. Okay, we're continuing. You're on, you're on the air. Um, so, as I'm saying, so I'm, a, I'm a Virgo, and when I... And, and my I'm answering you just with one word. I'm saying like this. You're saying emotions come from a deep place. So I'm just adding the word can come from a deep place. That's all. That's my answer to you. So it answers all your questions from astrology. Emotions are water and water goes deep. And by the way, <laughs> if it was like you, so you would say, water comes from a deep place. No, it goes to a deep place. It goes to a deep place. Okay, good. We try that when it comes to emotion. Emotions are coming out. They're being expressed. And you're bringing them also from something that goes in. So you mean to say it goes to a deep place and then it comes out of a deep place. I don't, I don't know exactly how to connect your muscle with the nimsa. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to work it. And uh, when you analyze it, of course, is when I don't know. But if you're just throwing around words, then what you're asking is very good. But I'm adding that it can come, emotions can come from a deep place, but you can't say they come from a deep place. Now, Zelina, just because, and now let's understand, Hashem gave a smile. What does a smile mean? When Maybe. You say gave a According smile? to this gear, sir, yep. which is very disputable. What? Hello? Yes, yeah, I'm here. What did you say? It's disputable that he I'm ever said it. disputable. That means we don't know for sure if he ever said to thing. Right, right. But let's try to understand why we don't want to believe it. I'm saying we don't want to. Those that are emotional that don't want to believe it. And those that are analytical might not want to believe it also. Why? So I'd say like this. Because it sounds like saying something positive about Zionism. That's why. Which is talking really, it's, 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 it's really a, a legitimate reason to... Uh, from the Briskorov, who yeah. was a uh, Magiloto Zionism, to you do it. Right. The Averas, the right, revolution right. against Hashem. So... Which is right. And by the way, I was on the, I was on the bus, and somebody I heard somebody uh, some person from America was asking for directions, and this other person started uh, talking and talking and and being made teeth to him. How do you say that in English? To preach to him about how why you're supposed to live in Israel because we're under a Jewish government, and why she live in America under a Gaisha government? I just couldn't hold myself in, so I said, what do you mean? In Israel, so we're living under a Geisha government. What's Jewish about this government? And he started yelling at me, yelling, yelling, and screaming. From then on, quite a few times when I see him in the street, I start fighting with him. And this last week, I said that Zionism means let's be Goyish. And Zionism means let's not care about Jewish lives. Let's just be heroes. And he, mommy, lost in school. He tried to hit me with a stick. Anyway, so, um, but let's understand. What does it mean when Hashem gave a smile? If, if somebody, if anybody said such a thing. We say Hashem gave a smile, so it means Hashem was showing a willingness to give to the world, to, to give good to the world. Of course, Hashem is always giving good to the world. With his goodness, he, he created every day, he's the world. But we're saying something new, something, some new goodness Hashem wanted to give to the world, some achidush of goodness. Hashem wanted to give that for the man. See, Hashem was smiling. It's like the preparation of... It's, 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 it's what we say in Downing. That means Hashem gives a smile. I mean, every day we 
saying, Dominic, that Hashem smiles to us. And with that smile, so he gave us Teres Chaim, Vavas Chesed, Stoker, Brother, Brother, Chaim, Shalom, a whole list. I'm saying Hashem gave. Now, that time in 1948, definitely in the sky something was happening. Like you, you probably remember the Gemara in Yuma. I don't remember that. Usually I don't remember Daphim, but I, it might be Ein Vov, Ein Zayn, where the Gemara talks about the, the fight between the Malochim and Heaven, the sire of Paras, against Michoel, the sire of Klal Yisrael, and the sire of Paras almost overpowered Michoel, and that's when the Parsim had a Shlita, and then Michoel's, and then... Uh, he wanted to write uh, to, to, to write to Xera that everybody should pay taxes to Mechomim also. So Mechoel grabbed away the, the paper from him where they were going to write the decree on it. So you see, and, 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 and how did it look in this world? In this world, uh, just imagine that there were newspapers in those days. So they were writing uh, um, the, the Persian uh, the Persian foreign minister or the or the, or the, how do you call it, the, what was it, what do you call this, uh, Kissinger, what was he called? Uh, Secretary of State. Secretary of State. The Secretary of State uh, of the of the Persian government wants to put out a decree that everybody should pay taxes, including the Talmud Chomer. And it would be an a, a item for the newspaper, and they would talk about it, and then they would write letters to the editor. And they don't know, but the Chazal were Megala to us that it was a fight going on between the Malachim up there. Now, we have to learn from this, Gemur, that, that everything that's big that's happening is, 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 is uh, something going on between the Malachim, Hashem with the Malachim. So definitely in 48, something was happening up there. And what, so what was happening? Now, it it, it gets very well. Now also, the Gemara says in Brochus that there was somebody, one of the time, I think it was Rova, that he had a dream that his arms got chopped off. And the Gemara says that he, the Poshe Chalom was the one that interprets the dreams. He said it means, oh, you're going to have so much parnosa that you're not going to need to work with your arms. So you see from here, um, there's something not, yeah, they're, they're, that's for sure that dreams are not dimyonus. I mean, we, when we talk about the dreams of Chazal, we're not just um, talking about dreams of people like us. A, a, a dream is a message, mean, I show mine, it's something coming down from heaven. So when the message coming down from heaven was, was in a terrible, tragic uh, a picture they were showing that his arms got chopped up. And, 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 but then you can interpret it. You can look at it from another side and say it means you don't need arms, you don't have to work for Parnassus because you're rich. The same thing is all kinds of things. Rabbi Rucham has a whole mimer on it. That between the idea that the person has in his head until it comes down, they might, it's a long trip. It looks like from between the brain and the hands doing it's very close, but it's a very long trip. And sometimes a person has an idea, but when it comes out, it comes out very, very bad. Now, can it be, and I'm sure we, we will find it in Chazam, that and uh, I might soon think of, I might soon remember where, and maybe I won't remember, that you find that Hashem wants to give good to the world, and it's prepared, and it's coming down, the Shefa is coming down, and on the way down, some kilko happens, and, and, and what was meant to be good comes out in a bad way. There is such an idea. So if you put these two Yisodas together, the first Yisod was that Hashem looks at the world with a smile, means a preparation of giving good. And the second Yisod is that sometimes there's good on the way down to the world, but when it comes down to this world, it can turn into bad. And there's the opposite way also. And if you accept these two points, so why can't it be that? Uh, and and then you you accept the third point, that which is the Gemara Yuma 
about the Malachim fighting. And in 1948, definitely some big changes happened in the world in this area. So definitely something big was happening in this Shomayim. So why can't it be that Hashem was preparing a lot of good for the world? And and in the end, when it, by the time it Rabbi reached Kaplan, this world, it turned in Rabbi Kaplan. Zionism. So what's there to get emotional Rabbi about? Rabbi Kaplan, can I say a word? Yeah. And the Briskorov, if you look at the four volumes Rabbi Mahler came out with, Uvdot Nahagot Lebeis Brisk. You see that this man was so logical that he could say this will happen. He was like, life for him was a chess game. There's so many stories where he understood exactly what would happen. And their most seem logical most seem, not not the Baal Shem most seem, logical. As, as uh, Tainug, Rabbi Freifeld said, anybody that wants to come to the yeshiva before he gets in, he has to learn these first four volumes on, of, of Mahler on the Briscoe. Yeah. To do it. Now, he knew as a certain thing the Medina is going to be shedding of Jewish blood on a massive scale. Right. Yeah, I just want to say it couldn't be. It couldn't be. He knew that blood was going to be shed. And Hashem is smiling. Mm. I'm taking up for the emotional. So, so what you're saying is that this point that we just said, that sometimes there's good being prepared, and when it reaches this world, it turns out bad, is limited. That idea is only limited up to bloodshed. But when it comes to bloodshed, that idea doesn't apply. Right, the Briskorov, the Briskorov, Rabbi Kaplan, the Briskorov already saw in the Kanisi Gadola of 1937, 38, Samich, Sadi Zion, Sadi Khet. Well, he said already, it's a, it's a deed. There's going to be bloodshed. There's going to be a Medina. It's going to be a Horban. Yeah. He knew already 10 years what was happening. But you did just what you just said doesn't answer on what I just said. It's not that it's, it's just, I mean, the Briskorovs looked at, he was standing what? above everything. He saw the Talichim Agadolim. Right. So, so what? So it means that he knew that this is, Dinim are coming. For 10 years he knew already what was going to be. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden he's going to say, oh, Hashem is smiling. No. I don't understand how what you're saying contradicts what I'm I, saying. You know what continue, uh, continue. Maybe you know even what Hashem is thinking also. Excuse me? You know what's happening in a logical way. Maybe even in a mystical way. And he interpret what's happening, the big change that just happened interpreted this way. Can you say anything wrong about this interpretation itself? Rabbi, I can't answer you right now. Continue, please, in your in your sicha. So, I'm saying, but maybe what you mean is it's not the brisker of style. That's certainly. Okay, and that I can't answer. Doesn't sound like his noosa, there is such a thing. Doesn't sound like his noosa. Okay, you can say that, but that's besides everything we're talking now. That's not really, you're not really going on the goof of showing you. But that could be. But now, so from everything I said, comes out that. That, uh, that 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 we don't that even us that we understand them, which it doesn't take a big heart to understand that Zionism that's the evil itself, and that's the darkest darkness maybe in history, and that's the Jews themselves destroying Jews destroying Judaism, which never happened in history before. Even though all this is true, 
Okay, Rabbi Kaplan, we're breaking now. Thank you.